everyone thanks so much for tuning into my new channel Rosie Sews Modern Vintage um, I'm really excited but I'm also very very scared to start this because I've never really vlogged before I've got no equipment so I'm holding the camera with my arm <laughs> eventually I'll be able to get a tripod um, but I'm just uh, just making do at the moment um, so I thought that today I could show you some of the things that I've been sewing hopefully you'll like it please give me a thumbs up if you do maybe even a press that cheeky subscribe button as well um, so let's get started so I'm standing by my wardrobe and I thought I will just pick things out and show you uh, what I've got so the first thing I wanted to show you was this really beautiful um, 1960s style long line jacket it um, is a reprint of, an, of a simplicity pattern from the 60s really love the style I thought it was just so um, unusual and I do I obviously am inspired by a lot of vintage patterns but I kind of like to give them a modern twist so I could use like a nice bright fabric this is from Kath Kidson it was one of their cotton duck uh, fabrics I used to work at Kath Kidson so I used to get brilliant discounts as well um, so yes yeah, so I made that and then to pick out some of the lovely colours um, I made the Tilly and the Buttons gathered skirt from their, from her book Love at First Stitch. Um, and it just really goes very nicely, as you can see. So that was a something I really loved. I may, actually made that a couple of years ago. Um, but it's just a style that just always stays in fashion. So I don't, you know, it can stay in my wardrobe forever, really, because it's it's just going to be timeless. Um, but when I made the Clement skirt, um, I did really like the pattern. So I decided to make a few more, and they're here. So first of all, this one again, it's in a Kath Kidson cotton duck. And what I love about that is that it, it's obviously got a nice thickness, um, and also it's good for kind of the winter months and looks really lovely with some nice thick tights. I've actually got some tights this colour and also some this colour so I've got a choice when I want to get um, get a nice winter outfit together. But um, because this was a, a little remnant from Kath Kidson I didn't have enough to make a full length skirt and as you can see I had to do a join. Um, so I just sewed the rick rack around just to hide the seam um, and I think it works fine and to be honest I really like doing that because then it just gives my clothes um, a unique look and I do quite like bright colours um, I like a mix of some planes but some uh, some simple prints and some simple colours but I also like to mix them with bright colours as well um, so I really liked that and then um, I also made the Clement skirt again in the Kath Kidson river fish print and um, I really loved this print, but I never bought it. And then there was just a really last minute um, uh, rush on it in the sale. Loads of people bought it. And then I decided that actually I did really like it. So there was just enough I could buy with my start discount to, um, to make the skirt. And I'm really pleased that I did. And I've often worn that with a yellow top and cardigan because I really like the yellow and green together. So I just pulled some more things out of the wardrobe now. So then the next pattern that I've had a bit of a run on <laughs> over the years, I've made quite a few of these skirts, is the By Hand London Charlotte skirt. I wear this quite a lot because I really feel like it makes me feel um, confident and glamorous um, and it has a nice kind of vintage twist to it. So um, I've got a few to show you. So first of all, if you um, followed me on Instagram, you'll have seen that I wore this one with the pleated peplum um, this pencil skirt to um, the local vintage shop in our town they did um, a best dress competition and I won the competition wearing that with um, a few other bits I was really I was so chuffed the fact that I won wearing something that I'd made myself I really made me feel pleased you know and, and it made me it made me feel more confident in the things that I make um, so that was something that I really liked and then another one um, which actually has just come out of the wash so it needs ironing is this red polka dot one this is no this doesn't have a peplum this is just straight um, but I really again I really love the polka dots a, I do love some quirky and unusual fabrics 
um, and actually it's quite nice to have just something like a polka dot because then um, I can mix that with a floral or a plain print or just use accessories to really jazz the outfit up um, and again I just find the pencil skirt shape on me really flattering and makes me feel nice so that's that one and then over here I've got another one that I made for the winter which is in just like a polyester tartan um, and that one I was really chuffed with how that came out but that really made the most of that nice check print I don't wear a lot of checks so um, I was a bit you know I wasn't sure how it was going to look but I really love that one I have got a green velvet one with like a um, green bow at the waist but um, that's in the wash so I can't show you that one so I'll just show you the last one which is this broidery anglais one so as you can see it's coming out quite well in the photograph it's got lining only to there just because I didn't want it um, carrying past I've put like a little split in the back I didn't want that to uh, show when I was wearing it um, so yeah that was just a poly cotton broidery anglais and because it had the scallops at the end I didn't bother um, hemming it or anything I just left it as was so that was really nice this fabric as well was from Poundland um, and I think I paid like £3.50 a metre I think I used a metre and a half so it's a really bargain price skirt as well um, and I think really nice for the summer and then finally I thought I'd show you the tops that I've been making I've kind of been a bit nervous of tops because I am a bit of a funny shape <laughs> and um, although I don't have a massive bust I do carry a lot of my weight on my back so it means that um, often I need some kind of bust adjustment, whether it's a small bust adjustment or full bust adjustment. So um, I find that quite tricky, but that's been my goal this year to learn all about um, the sort of bodice adjustments. So I'm getting there, um, So, but I haven't got a lot to show you. So I thought I would just show you the things that I've got in my wardrobe at the moment. This first one, I'm really... Uh, I really love not because it was any grand sewing project because it wasn't it was just this um, sleeveless little shell top and I didn't finish off the seams as you can see they're not overlocked naughty me is anybody the same as me in that you uh, when you've sort of nearly finished a project you kind of rush the last bit you just want to wear it and get it get it on um, and I was a bit like that with this one to be honest pretty much all my makes unless I've done a French seam I very rarely uh, finish them off with an overlocker um anyway so yeah i really love this it's in a quilting cotton and this bandana print is just so cool i really love it again it's kind of quite a nice rockabilly pin-up look um and i wear that with like some um black cropped trousers um or jeans even and a denim jacket and but no not double denim sorry black cropped trousers and a denim jacket <laughs> um and yeah i just really love that and then uh this one was also a simplicity reprint. Of one that they'd done in the past. Um, and it was a big challenge for me because on the back, as you can see, it's got this yoke and then pleats down to the waist. And that yoke was not complicated by any means, but uh, fiddly. And it was just trying to get my head around the instructions because sometimes I find that the instructions just aren't written in the way that I think. So then once I've managed to work out what they're trying to say, then I can fiddle around with it. But I must admit that this this blouse, I did do a bit of a sewing SOS on um, on Instagram and just said to people, have you got any idea how to piece the collar piece, like the collar facing together? Because it didn't seem to go. And then at right the 11th hour, somebody messaged me at like I don't know it's like 10 to midnight I think and said oh yeah there's an extra like clip you have to make into the fabric that looks like a notch but you actually clip into the fabric and it extends the collar by like two centimeters really weird thing but I did it and it absolutely did work so that was good so anyway so I'm really pleased with that I love these little red buttons they are so cute um I can't I can't remember where I got them from but I got this feeling I might have cut them off something and put them back in my fabric stash uh, so yeah and um, the, the fabric was actually red poly cotton sheeting from fabric land uh, I'm all for a bargain myself so this again this blouse was a similar bargain to the 
broad your envelope probably cost me just a few pounds to make so well chuffed with that so the next thing is a Tilly and the Buttons um, cocoa top so again it's a three-quarter sleeve lovely funnel neckline um, and that is a really nice six gives a really nice 60s look um, with crop jeans or um, I have worn it under some denim dungarees that I bought from Collective as well. Um, I really love this pattern. It looks really stylish and really unusual, but it actually is very, very easy. So if you're new to sewing stretch fabrics or just new to sewing in general, um, I thoroughly recommend the Coco Jumper top. So this last one is the Stevie top from Tilly and the Buttons as well. Um, very very easy sew and really beautiful I made it in this um, navy blue and white polka dot crepe uh, viscose and that was from a lady on Instagram no Facebook sorry called um, Herrera and her Facebook page is Sal S A L fabrics and she sells some really bargain fabrics this was I think two pound fifty a meter because I think it's I think it's dead stock um, so yeah, so anyway, um, I did the lovely turn-ups on the cuffs and I also chose to do the bow finish on the back which I actually sewed into place um, so you can't undo it because I can actually take the top off over my head anyway and I just thought actually if I sew it in place then the bow's always going to look okay <laughs> and it's not going to come undone when I don't want it to. Um, so yeah, so that is all of my makes that I'm going to show you today. Um, I thought that I would also do a video on my plans for the coming months, um, which I've in also made a bullet journal about, so I thought maybe you might like to see the bullet journal as well. I'd love to hear what you thought. As I said before, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you would like to. And please also leave comments in the bottom if there's anything that you'd like to see from me uh, in the future videos. And uh, thanks ever so much for watching. Bye. Bye.